Hi, my name is Pippa. I'm an audiologist and coach, and this is a somatic tracking exercise for medically unexplained tinnitus. This is a process designed to teach your brain that the tinnitus sound is a safe sound and that it doesn't need to amplify it and bring your attention to it to protect you from it. It's not designed to get rid of the tinnitus immediately and retraining the brain takes time. In time, you'll be able to do the exercise without listening to this. Even if you just do it for a few seconds at a time, it will be retraining your brain. There are different ways to do this exercise and you can do it in different ways on different days depending on how you're feeling in yourself. If you're feeling strong in yourself, you could do it in a quiet room. And if you do that, it doesn't need to be completely quiet. If background sounds are coming from the outside, that's absolutely fine. Just let them come and go. If you're feeling a bit overwhelmed at the moment and the tinnitus is loud, you could try playing the pleasant sound in the background on another device to make this feel easier to do. So that could be something like rain sounds, babbling brook, bird song, or cat purrs. Something that feels pleasant to you. It's really important that the other sound that is played is at a level quiet enough so that you can still hear the tinnitus sounds as well. In order to overcome the fear of the sound, we need to expose ourselves to the sound at times in a safe way. And that's what this exercise is designed to do. If you're feeling particularly overwhelmed today, then you may want to wait for a day when you're feeling stronger to make it easier for you to observe the sounds in a safe way. If you're feeling overwhelmed by the sounds during the exercise, then you can bring in an extra layer of safety. So this could be something like putting your hand on your heart, taking a few deep breaths, putting some of your attention on your breath while keeping some attention on the sound, or picturing someone you love or a pet with you to support you. You can also stop and try another day when you're feeling stronger in yourself, knowing that that is the most compassionate and helpful thing that you can do for yourself in that moment. So sit down in a comfy place and allow your body to relax. And we'll start by taking a few deep breaths through your nose, into your stomach and feeling your waist expand in all directions, 360 degrees. Making the out breath as long as or longer than the in breath. And gradually making the breaths longer, if that feels comfortable. This will calm your nervous system and make the process easier. Close your eyes if that feels comfortable. Let go of the breath and ground yourself. Feel your feet if they're on the floor and notice how they feel on the floor. Feel your body meet the surface which you're sitting on and notice the points of contact. Become aware of your entire body from the top of your head to the tips of your fingers and toes. Now draw your focus to your breath, knowing that your breath is safe and there is nothing wrong with your breath. Some breaths will be deeper and some breaths will be more shallow and that's okay. We don't need to change them in any way. 
we're just noticing them with curiosity and ease. And some breaths may be shorter and some breaths may be longer. And again, that's okay. We don't need to change them or make them any particular length. And I want you to observe your breath going in and out in the same light-hearted way that you would watch clouds in the sky. And when you're watching clouds in the sky, we don't care what they do. We don't care if the clouds turn into an animal or a car. We're just noticing and staying curious without any desired outcome. And now I want you to bring your attention or some of your attention to the internal sounds and use the light way of observing these sounds that we used on the breath. We're going to observe them with curiosity and ease. Recognising that these sounds are not you. You are the one who is observing them. And knowing that these sounds are safe. And that studies show that 94% of people hear internal sounds when in a very quiet room. Because the brain increases the sensitivity to try hear something and picks up on the normal, healthy background sounds in the hearing system and head that were there all the time, but they didn't notice them before. It's simply that your brain is overreacting to a perfectly neutral, perfectly safe sound because it believes that it's dangerous and it's trying to protect you from it. So see if you can pay attention to this sound. You don't need to change it. You don't need to get rid of it. It's simply your brain making a misinterpretation. Knowing that if you have hearing loss, that's a separate thing. Lots of people have hearing loss and don't notice internal sounds. And lots of people have no hearing loss and loud internal sounds. Because hearing is in the brain, not in the ears. The ears gather the information and we hear the sound in the brain, influenced by its beliefs, fears and expectations. And we can notice the quality of the sound in the same way that we notice the quality of the breath. We can notice whether the sound is high pitched or low pitched or maybe different pitches at once. We can notice if the pitch changes or if it stays the same knowing that either way is okay because this is a safe sound. Mm -hmm. 
And as we notice it, if it gets louder, then that's okay. That's your brain. And if it gets quieter, that's okay too. That's your brain. It doesn't matter what it does. You can notice where you hear it. Is it in one ear? Or both ears? Or in a specific point in your head? All that matters is that we're watching it through a lens of curiosity and ease to teach your brain that this is a safe sound. This is the music of your brain. And we're going to sit back and watch the show. Allow yourself to experience it rather than to think about it. Like we're watching an orchestra playing and we're just sitting in the audience. We're not going to jump in and start trying to play the instruments. We're not going to tell the conductor what to do and make them change it in any way or tell them what the tempo should be. We're just going to sit back and enjoy the music. All we have to do is observe. We're just going to notice what the music does without trying to change it in any way. And the violins might come in. And there might be a flute solo. Or the drums might pick up the pace or slow down. Knowing that if it gets louder or quieter or changes in pitch, it's a safe sound and it's all fine. We're just going to enjoy the show. Isn't it amazing that your brain can generate these sounds? At times, it may sound more like a school orchestra than the Philharmonic. But that's okay too. When we watch the school orchestra, we can see that the children are enjoying themselves and appreciate the music for what it is. And if you notice that part of you is judging the sounds and wishing that they were the philharmonic, then we're going to recognize that we get it and it makes sense. But that part can just wait in another room for now to let us appreciate the show exactly as it is, without judging it or trying to change it. And what do you notice happening as you pay attention to it? Does it intensify or subside? Does it change pitch? Does it move around from one ear to the other or move in your head? We're not listening with a sense of scrutiny and intensity and trying to write down 
every note that the orchestra plays and transcribe it out onto music paper. And we don't need to analyse the sound to write a report on it. We're just relaxing and observing, knowing that there is nothing else to do in this moment. Knowing that every time we do this, we are rewiring the brain. Your brain may have learned that your internal sounds are dangerous, like a scary roaring lion. And what you're doing every time you do this exercise is little by little, we're teaching your brain that this is a safe sound, like a little kitten parry. No cause for alarm. And when you feel ready, you can open your eyes and come back to the room.